Brett, Jason, uh, congratulations on Big Ben. Um, you know, my first initial reaction to this movie, I just love the pacing of it. You know, I feel the serenity, even though there's conflict going on, right? But I mean, I just feel like you're away from society, you're away from everything. And it just all of a sudden, all your tensions and everything that you bring with you starts to melt away. I mean, that's how I felt. I just love the pacing in this movie. So I'm not sure if that was your intention, uh, Brett. Yes, it was. Like, <laughs> I'm going to just say for Brett, like, it's a courageous move to make a movie with this kind of focus and time. And I'm so glad that that's the first thing you responded to, because I agree with you. It's really beautiful in that yeah. way. Well, Jason, the story of two families, the prices and the Talbots, how does a visit change these two families? I think that they, they, both families and all four of the heads of these households have things that they're navigating privately and as couples. And then somehow being together and out in the middle of this gorgeous beatific desert land, it just opens them up. And then a crisis of his daughter going missing. Corey, my character's daughter, goes missing on a hike. It just brings it all forward to uh, have to deal with all of these things that they're each confronting, which all come out in the end. And there's a beautiful element of the unknown that weaves its way throughout the whole thing um, that can happen in life and certainly happens out in the big bend. Oh, absolutely. And Brett, tell me about finding your cast, because this is definitely an ensemble movie. It is, yeah, and it's an ensemble that um, I, I feel I got so fortunate that that it works so well. I mean, I knew individually all of these were great actors, but it really I don't think was possible to predict until they were all there together doing it uh, that the chemistry would be so convincing and that the marriages would feel so believable as marriages and the parent-child relationships would would feel so authentic um so you know we it, we started with jason you know he was the first and only person that we offered that part to and it was because i had seen him on ozark you know playing roy petty and just thought it was a tremendous unforgettable performance um as everybody who's seen those two seasons agreed feels <laughs> um and uh you know so so once Jason was on board, which was incredible, incredibly fortunate, um, we were doing a lot of casting and uh, we just sort of found them, you know, one by one uh, with, you know, Mac in a way being the hardest part to cast. Mm -hmm. David Sullivan, um, you know, I wasn't familiar with him as an actor. I actually was because one of my favorite low budget science fiction movies is Primer, which was his first movie. I'm a huge fan of that movie and I always tell people to watch it, but I didn't know when David Sullivan auditioned that that was the same guy. Um, and uh, he is the only one. I don't know what we would have done if he had not been available because we auditioned a lot of great people. A lot of people read for it. Um, there were people interested who, you know, who, whose names you would know, who just, they, they were great, but they just weren't, they weren't Mac. He, mm -hmm. it, it's just a unique combination of traits that, that David really embodies. Um, uh, the, you know, Erica, um, was incredible as Georgia and brought like life and vitality and a certain kind of vivaciousness to, you know, to a, a part that could have otherwise been, been maybe dour, you know, mm -hmm. or, or just sad, uh, but she made it lively and, and wonderful and, and it brings a lot of energy to the film. Um, Did you the allow last me? puzzle you piece. I'm saying, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, the last puzzle piece among the, the, you know, the the main cast to fall into place was Virginia Cull as Melanie. Um, and we were making offers for that part, um, but we were just, you know, even people who, who really liked the script and wanted to do it, the, the scheduling just wasn't working out. And and by this time, Jason was on board. And so so he and I were brainstorming and, and uh, Virginia was his suggestion. Um, and I went and watched her and I, I had seen her in Big Little Lies which is a fairly light part. But then I went and watched her in some things I hadn't seen her in, which were much darker, where she's really raw and, and, and dealing with intense emotions. And, um, and it was immediately clear that she would be fantastic. And, uh, and then um, the girls uh, are my actual daughters. Um, still. And uh, they're still my daughters, yeah. They were my daughters and they remain my daughters. 
And that turned this into a little bit more of a, of a family adventure for us. Uh, my wife came down and we all, uh, you know, pulled through this thing uh, together. And did you allow any improv? Because sometimes it feels, you know, like you let the scene go where it needs to. It, it's really loose, you know, it feels loose. And yes, um, uh, it's, it's more scripted than you would think it is um, mm -hmm. based on how natural and unrehearsed it all feels. Um, but, uh, because we were shooting a lot of masters, a lot of wide shots, um, you know, you tend to let the camera run in those cases, you know, is not sort of, it's not that coverage where you grab your master and then you're in singles, you know, and, and maybe the actor's not even playing off the other real actor, you know, it's maybe they're maybe being fed lines that kind of, you know, more, I, I, I don't know. Um, we didn't do that. Uh, all of the actors had to be fully in it uh, all the time because they never could really tell when the camera was on them because our, you know, our, our format is so wide. Um, and they did, they kept, they would keep it alive. They knew the characters well enough that they, you know, when they reached the end of, you know, what was scripted and I hadn't said cut, they just keep rolling with it. And, and I would let it roll as well. And there are so many times when in an, you know, um, in an uh, almost, not that I would, I'm making this comparison, but in an almost Robert Altman sort of way, people are mm -hmm. talking over each other. Um, and, and that's not all scripted, right? So, so if, if Jason and David are in the background of a shot that's, that's really about, you know, Virginia and Erica, they've got to keep going and, and they're mic'd and some of that's in the movie. And, and so, yes, there was a lot of, of uh, you know, the, the, the story is not improv at all. And the important lines of dialogue you would find in the script, um, but there's a lot of texture around the edges. Yeah, it's at least 95%, if not more of the actual script. And then there's, especially with, especially moments with the kids too, where, you know, listen, the entire movie is telling you to lean into what's actually happening in your nature, in your life. And in, that, in those instances, especially on an independent movie, with a certain budget in the desert, in the heat, in the rain, and with kids, you just got to go with, <laughs> you just got to go with the kids. The only scene that we reshot <laughs> was uh, the snakes and cactuses scene because we just, I forget why we had to reshoot that. Something happened with this film. Right? It, it was the, the, the desert safety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the desert yeah. safety scene. Um, and honestly, it was just light. Um, yeah. It was that we lost the light, the sun dipped behind the horizon. Uh, about halfway through shooting the scene and it just wasn't going to feel right. And so that was, and it was such an important scene to me. Um, I loved it so much and I loved the way the kids and David were playing off of each other so much that I really wanted to make it look great too and didn't want to have to cut around a lighting issue. So we shot that, we reshot that a week or two later in the schedule. Also the character of Carl, as you can see right here, what no. What a bigger than life character. I mean, tell me about finding him and, and doing that character because he was just, it was almost like he was a legend of the West, you know, <laughs> coming to life. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Nick Moshangelo is um, an old friend of mine. I've known him for a long time. So in a sense, you can say he was the first person we cast because I wrote it uh, knowing it was going to be him. Um, even right down to that line of, you know, with a white eyebrow, it, you know, I, I, you know, uh, I was I was committed to it being Nick at that point. Um, you know, he's he's a great guy. He was in many ways like the heart and soul of the set. He was the kind of guy. You know, he works professionally as a grip, actually. Um, in a, I mean, he's a professional actor, but he also grips. And and there were days where he just came out and helped the G and E crew uh, if he didn't have to if he didn't have a scene that day. Um, he and my daughter, uh, Delilah, just had an amazing relationship built around riding around in that dune buggy together. And uh, he was just great. He was just great to have on set. And Jason, excited screening at the Austin Film Festival. Tell me about that experience. Well, it's I'm so excited because the entire crew who worked their butts off uh, are going to be there. And some, some stories that I've heard about that were happening while we were there, I get to now harass them about. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it takes a village and we had a really small village. And, and I think it's also perfect that this film, which takes place and is so much about Texas, is starting in Austin. It's a big, it's a very synchronistic moment that's important. So. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, I, I arrived uh, in Austin last night and I haven't left my hotel room. Um, 
this the premiere is tomorrow and i just i cannot wait to see uh see these people again in person you know we lived through something tremendous something so challenging and difficult and fun and and frustrating and frightening um uh and you know of course i've seen you know i've seen uh the cast more recently because I, I was out in la and i screened the film for them um but i haven't seen most of the crew um you know, since we shot and I just can't wait for them and I'm uh, to see it. And I'm so glad they're going to get to see it on the big screen. Thank God that the Austin Film Festival is on ground in person. Uh, you know, this movie just needs to be seen in that format. Well, congratulations on a, a job well done. And I wish you all the success at your premiere tomorrow. And thank you both for talking to me. Let's do it again soon. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you so much. Pleasure meeting you. Pleasure. Take care.